Okay, uh, Seth sent me a, a link, and sorry, Seth, I haven't gotten around to uh, watching it. But the question was about scientists, and when are the scientists are getting close, but they still are putting everything in the brain. You know, it's got to come from the brain. Well, there are scientists that are understanding that there is another player in this game, and that is the player of consciousness that they're trying to figure out. And, of course, for a scientist, that is a tricky one because consciousness at this point cannot be seen and it cannot be measured. They can see the effects of it, but they cannot see it and they cannot measure it. So, so basically, the question is, uh, when are they going to get it? Well, it doesn't matter where they stand. So, in first place, I want you to remember, real quickly, all of you that are scientific-based, I want you to remember what the scientists knew 100 years ago, 500 years ago, and see how far they've come. They've come a long ways, especially in the last, I would say, 50 years. So, but ultimately, the game of, uh, the, the game of science is a game. It is a separate game that is inclusive of this physical um, game that, you, that people are playing in 3D, 4D. So the second they completely get it, then the game is over. So it is in this process of figuring things out that is a part of this 3D, 4D game. So when they, when they do figure it out, then it's over. Well, they don't want to figure it out. They're still playing the game of scientists in many, many different levels. Same thing is true with um, how to educate people properly. Uh, what is the right religion? Um, how to operate world economies, uh, governments and how they interact, uh, how you run a village or a town, how do families, how, sh how should families be, be organized? All of this is a part of the game here. Okay, so from a, if you're interested in going to 5D, all of those games are really interesting and fun to watch, but it's kind of like watching politics. It's really not relevant. What you see around you is what you have created in the past. Okay, it is not your future. Nothing about it is your future. So if you're heading to 5D and unity consciousness, then what you want to be looking at is how uh, you want to see, you want to visualize everything going from here closer to oneness. So you want to visualize, uh, let's give you an example of what I'm doing. You want to see what I'm doing is I'm visualizing modern medical just pretty much crumbling and people who they're already doing this on my timelines that they don't trust modern medicine anymore and they're going to naturopaths they're studying herbs they're going to the old uh, uh, really referring a lot to India uh, herbal medicines and Chinese herbal medicines that have been around for a very very long time and then eventually learning that they don't even need those and that they can correct those energies and disease processes themselves, healing themselves, and then everyone healing themselves going back to one. Okay, that is what I am seeing happening for me. So you can see how I am correcting the, the complex for money medical setup that is here in modern medicine and putting it back to nature to cure yourself to oneness. You do that, I do that same thing with every other group. And in the process of that, you will see that at some point along here, and it's totally up to you where that happens, that all of these things are going to disappear into one thing. Okay? So you can also do that with, okay, money. Money has been hijacked by the bankers, by the bad guys, and they have made it a usury type situation. So people, I visualize people not using money, repurposing and upscaling things um, and using the barter system and stopping using 
fret it all together. The other thing is that uh, I'm seeing people not buy on credit at all. If they don't have the money, they don't buy it. So that kind of takes away the credit cards uh, altogether. And then it goes into a barter system where it really takes away a lot of the money system. And I see that going into a holy barter system and then eventually into a, um, everyone doing what they love, what they want to do, and sharing it with someone else. Who So if you love gardening and uh, you're still eating, we're still talking about people who are eating at this point, and you love gardening and somebody else loves uh, raising chickens, then you could exchange your vegetables for their eggs. You see? And you love doing when everybody starts loving doing what they're doing. In education, it goes from this rigid, follow the rules, be this little square peg in a square hole type thing into loving the diversity, following the individual's interests of helping and assisting them to learn, encouraging them to, to reach out and learn things themselves, following the kid in their interest and in, in helping them learn what they're interested in versus you making the kid follow what you want them to do. And eventually, of course, that will tie into uh, meditation where you teach, where they're taught, people, young ones are taught they are creator gods. They have access to the all-knowing. They don't need to learn from this book because they have access to a greater library. And eventually they will be able to um, access that all-knowing just like I do. And that gets rid of the education system. Of course, the governments will, I don't think anyone is, I think a lot of people understand the, the trouble with governments, all governments. And now we've seen enough governments and we've got history from enough governments that they all fail eventually that that doesn't work. So we need to go into a different uh, kind of way of getting along with each other, which will come with that understanding that we are all one and there will be no need for uh, militaries at all uh, because I do not hit, I do not cut off my own finger because that's silly. Of course, that can be done with the increase in telepathy. And with telepathy, all of that need for uh, a separate government and militaries goes away. Do you see what I'm doing here? Okay, however you want to do it is individual to you. What works with you, what you can see around you that will support where you're going. So what you want to do is not pay any attention to what's out there already. That's not relevant. You are a creator God and you have created that. But if you want something different, now you need to quit looking at what is there and see and know and be and live what you want it to be, what you know it will be in 5D. This process of getting to 5D is key. It is important. And each of us will do this our own way. It is a part of this, this understanding of all of us sharing where we are and how we're doing it. Just like I shared the way I'm doing that, we all share with each other. No judgment that my way, what I just described, is no better than anyone else's way. It just works well with my history, with my belief systems, and what I can see happening around me. Okay? Because I was in the medical field, and I know how broken it is, it's relatively easy for me to look around and see naturopaths, and uh, see wild crafters, and see... Um, uh, natural teas being brewed and natural cures popping up everywhere. I mean, it's everywhere. And people are finding that most of the disease processes that we've been told are uncurable are absolutely curable. It's just that they said they were uncurable and kept the cures from us because they wanted to make money. Well, people are learning that and they're really going away. Unless it's a traumatic uh, or really, really... Um, 
brittle uh, a chronic disease, it's either got to be trauma or a really brittle chronic disease. And most, and even then, with the chronic diseases, people are doing what the what the modern medicine says, but they're also adding, with the knowledge of our, their doctor, all of these natural cures on their way to getting better. So it's very easy for me to see that that is changing a lot. And I can see a major change in the banking system. I can really see a lot of uh, alternative, alternative living, the people going off grid, people operating with solar and hydropower, all kinds of ways that people are growing their own food, living independently. Uh, if you watch my channel, you know I watch a lot of tiny house videos and a lot of um, changing vans into tiny houses and buses and uh, panel trucks and uh, there's a lot of stealth camping now that people uh, live in their vehicles, but they do it stealthily because most places it's, it's illegal to sleep in your vehicle. So they do it stealthily so that they can just go to work and they don't tell anybody at work what they're doing so that they can save money so that they can um, either, a lot of them are looking to finance getting out of the jobs that they have and being independent in some way. So there's a lot, I see a lot of that going on, which pulls away from a lot of uh, norms. All of the kids are being homeschooled. They're being schooled out in the middle of these farms. And they're being, then, or they're traveling all over the place with their parents. Amazing, uh, absolutely amazing what these kids are being raised with. Uh, stupendously amazing. So that is what I am seeing. And I imagine that I will see a lot more of it whenever I hit the road in my schoolie. I, I will be introduced to a lot more of those people. I'm very excited to see that. But I just don't allow myself to be around the uh, classic living experiences for very long. Um, and even when I do, and I am interested in going seeing them because on my timelines, they are dying. They will go away. Uh, they will be gone. And so I want to see them one more time, cities as we know it and as I've known it my whole life, that they are changing in some magnificent ways. That people are under the impression that there are too many people on this planet, when in reality, if you look around, uh, oh, there's millions of miles of, of areas that have not seen human footprint that we know of for, well, ever. Uh, there's lots and lots of it, but these are not places that have all the amenities. So if you're a city dweller, it looks like there are too many people on the planet because there's a whole bunch of people piled on top of each other in this tiny little area. Okay, well, that's because they want all that stuff that they get in that tiny little area. But if you don't want that stuff, there's plenty, thank goodness, there's plenty of room out there uh, for... Uh, living out in the middle of nowhere, very far away from all those amenities. There's lots of space. Uh, the places that are are citified, uh, yeah, it can appear pretty bad. But as people in my timelines make these adjustments that they can make a living traveling, there's all kinds of uh, work camping places that you can work at and you can make enough money to sustain. There's all this time whenever there's harvest time that you can make enough money to last until the holiday times where there's uh, quite a few jobs available so that you can work uh, two, three months here, two, three months here, and that will pay for the other half of the year. Aside from all of the jobs online that people are doing now, which is huge, huge amount of jobs available online now. So, uh, and if you are living, if you've downsized tremendously and got rid of um, most of the consumerish nature and the big house and new cars, if you're not doing that anymore, then the cost of living drops a huge, huge drop in what it costs to live, especially if you're growing your own food and... Um, yeah, if you're growing, if you've got a garden, a lot of people can put up enough food for themselves and have enough left over to sell for, uh, to put back for 
the winter months. That's happening a lot. So that is what I see in my, around me. And so that is my reality, and that's what I build off of. You, of course, will build off whatever is around you. And whatever it is, however you want to do it. Okay? But as you go down, um, if you're a big city uh, and city amenities person, but you're going to 5D, it will be up to you to make that transition into a pristine world where there's instant manifestation and you don't need to buy an airplane because you can fly. You don't need to buy a car because you can in instant manifest it and drive anywhere you want um, as fast as you want and then it goes away. So you can have a lot of the toys. You can have the giant house for as long as you want to have it um and then it will go away but none of these things will be built in a factory type setting uh, none of these will cost money money will be gone so however it is that you need to step yourself over to the 5d um reality is unique and special to you and there will be way way different so i've just told you what my way is and how it's working beautifully which is why I don't uh, look around at other people's reality very much. It's the reason why I don't watch other NDE uh, stories. It's not really relevant to me. That is that creator's um, experience. And they did it for their reasons. And I give them honor and credit for what they have done. But it doesn't have anything to do with what I am creating at all. And... Uh, somebody who is who, who is a who is building a giant empire on money has nothing to do with me uh, because their timelines will be going so differently than mine that uh, I really probably won't even have an aspect of them over in my timelines there's a good chance okay and uh, yeah there are infinite timelines I think I've said this before but I haven't I'll stick it in here there are infinite timelines, but there are not. You are not on every timeline. You will have died at uh, stillbirth to 150 years old and everything in between. Any, many, and every kind of option during your life that is possible, you will have done all those things. So um, you will not be in a time. You may be in a timeline where uh, uh, you you cannot access a certain timeline because that's a timeline where you died younger okay just a little insert there so there you go so that is how i am collapsing into the one everyone will need to that's going to 5d but you are welcome uh to do it in any way you'd like to do it uh you can create it any way you want to there will be a collective that agrees with you uh, as you move along and do your thing uh, I would certainly like to enjoy hearing about what you're doing and how you're doing it uh, that is unique to you, but it is very individual, and we will do this very... The people that are still watching me and continue to watch to me, probably uh, these 400 people, no matter what it grows to, we will be doing it very differently uh, as we go there. That is the reason why I had you get rid of fear and judgment, because as you are interacting with these other people going quickly to 5D, they are going to be collapsing into unity consciousness uh, much differently than you will be. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is absolutely the way it was meant to be and supposed to be. And if you uh, start judging, then that will kick you off of my timeline. It's not bad. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that if you want, when you start judging, that will cause you to be on timelines that are a little bit slower to 5D and around people that are doing it. Uh, more people that are collapsing into the oneness more like you. Whereas we have such a small group and we're moving so fast that it is uh, very likely that we will be collapsing to oneness uh, very differently. So it is very important that we do not judge each other, but yet are fascinated by how each of us is doing it. It's very, very important. 
and it will speed us up as well. The more fascinated you are uh, about how somebody else is collapsing to oneness and not judgmental, uh, the faster we move, the faster I move. So it's an interesting, even if you're watching somebody else do something and you just admire their game. And that's what it comes down to. It's changing from judging that person's game into admiring and, and, and being fascinated at the game that they are creating. The magnificent game that they're creating. Whether they're a good guy or a bad guy. And when you can look at the bad guy's um, game and know the struggle and the pain that he is in because he has to be in order to play that role, then it becomes, whoa, whoa. So you've been doing this for 30, 40 years at that level? Whoa. Hats off to you. There is no way I could handle those vibes at that level. So, wow. Thank you for doing that game to add that experience to the whole. Awesome. Thank you for that. And that's how you start looking at things as you head to 5D. All right. Makes sense? Does that help? Hope. All right. I'm going to move on now. So, uh, huge hugs to you. I love you so much. And I'll talk to you later. Bye now.